Thanks for checking out Scotty's Hobbies. Today I'm going to be showing you the emissions locations on this here 2009 Ram 1500 3.7 liter. It's a V6. I'm going to be showing you a lot of components and giving you a lot of information on those components and on your vehicle. Let's get started with this underhood label. This will let you know a lot of things about your vehicle, such as this here is a 2009 year model vehicle. It is California compliant. It'll let you know right here and tells you what emission standards this vehicle is compliant to. Next right here is the engine size, 3.7 liter, the engine family number right below it, and the EVAP family number. Next is the emissions equipment on the vehicle. Here is a three-way catalytic converter, two of them. You also have two heated oxygen sensors. And then next is going to be the EGR valve. And fine, fine, finally is the sequential fuel injection I'm not going to be going over that but i will be showing you everything else on this sticker and a lot more and give you a lot of information on those components while you're watching make sure you like subscribe and share if this isn't your vehicle or doesn't help you on your vehicle make sure you check out my video library before you go too far i have a ton of videos on emissions components locations if you have questions make sure you ask as well first off real quick here is the emissions vapor purge solenoid this allows your emissions vapors to be released back into the intake and through the combustion chamber and out the exhaust through the catalytic converter to clean it up or clean up the vapors in that fashion. Again, emissions vapor purge solenoid. If you need one, there will be a link in the description below to purchase one. You can see the bottom line going to the purge solenoid was coming from the vent canister and the top line goes up to the intake. And over here where it goes into the intake, you're going to find the PCV valve and the EGR valve. I am going to have a video on replacing the PCV valve coming out pretty quick, but getting on with these emissions. The PCV valve, positive crankcase ventilation valve. This allows built up gases in the oil system and the engine system to be pushed back into the intake and through the combustion process again. Right next to your PCV valve is your EGR valve, exhaust gas recirculation valve. This allows burnt gases going through the exhaust to come back up into the intake again and to be recirculated to lower NOx, which lowers emissions. NOx is one of the most harmful gases to us. The PCV valve goes up over on the other side of the intake. You can see it right there. It gets its vacuum from right there on the back side of your intake plenum. I would recommend if you're having a problem with the PCV valve, you might as well replace that whole hose and everything while you're in there. It's fairly cheap and you can find them everywhere now. So for the PCV valve to work, it's got to get air from the other side of the engine. It will suck in air on that side, which is right here. This is your breather. This is the non-vacuum side. On the back, your little elbow right there gets air that is filtered right here on the intake housing. Sorry, air filter housing. The PCV valve should be replaced about every 45 to 60,000 miles. Uh, they're fairly easy to replace, it looks like. And again, the video will be coming out, and you'll be able to do it on your own. I'll give you the tools and all that stuff like all my other videos. So if the PCV valve is bad, you could have some weird uh, like mixture issues, the P219s, the P0219s, I believe they are, or a P0171. So if you have a lean or rich mixture, that could be because your PCV valve isn't working properly. Of course, it could be a number of other things. Moving on, we're getting on to the oxygen sensors. This is your bank two side. So if you have a code coming up for a bank two sensor one or bank two sensor two, those will be right here. This is your bank two sensor one oxygen sensor, air fuel ratio sensor probably. This is the one that is giving information to the computer so the computer knows how much fuel to give or take away and gets your best stoichiometric uh, air fuel ratio. The back oxygen sensor right here this oxygen sensor is responsible for monitoring that catalytic converter and letting the know, letting the know, letting the computer know if your catalytic converter is working properly. It wants to see a good level signal, not a wave of a rich lean signal like your input right, oxygen right. sensor wants to see. Now, bank one, sensor one. This is, again, the oxygen sensor that gives the computer information, how much fuel to give or take away to this side of the engine. So bank one sensor one is up front. 
bank two sensor two right here in the middle of the catalytic converter on the driver's side. Again, it monitors the catalytic converter and it'll let the computer know if your cat is good or bad. If you do have a bad cat and you're not in an emissions area, there are things you could do, little bungs you could put on there and fool the computer, but let's do our best to keep the air clean. So if you're having an air fuel ratio problem, it could be one of these sensors right here. And if you're chasing a code, if this video helps you find or chase a code, mention the code below, please, and let us know if it did help you and how the video did help. Now we have the vapor canister. This stores evap vapors until the computer opens up the purge, or in this case, usually a vent, but this vehicle doesn't have a vent solenoid. It actually has a leak detection pump that I'm gonna to get to shortly that the vehicle uses as a vent solenoid. So if you have a leak detection pump problem, there's gonna be two things, it could be two things. First, here's the leak detection pump right here on the back side of the vapor canister. This is used by the computer to allow air into the vapor system or to allow pressure out into the ambient or into the world. So the vapors go out that hose right there on the top and they go up that hose and that hose goes to a filter. And I didn't intentionally make a video getting yeah. that filter. I didn't notice there was a filter actually on this one until I was going through the parts list. I was like, oh my God, there's a filter. And I went through the videos and I actually did get it. So you gotta look pretty hard, but there's a filter coming up. And if you have a leak detection pump problem, right there, there's a filter at the end of that. It's kind of hard to see, but that filter can get clogged and give you lots of problems. If you're getting weird evap codes that you just can't find or figure out, you might want to check that filter out and just make sure that this whole hose is free of debris from the leak detection pump all the way up to that filter. They used to be vapor vent solenoids and those used to, that vent solenoid hose used to get clogged a lot. So if this video helped you out, make sure you comment below. Let me know the codes that you're chasing. If you have any questions, let me know if I can help you out. Make sure you check out my video library and hopefully you'll sub. I'll see you guys on the next hopefully helpful video. Thanks for checking out Scotty's Hobbies.